Welcome to the Continuum Lab. It's finally time for an update on the Open Horn music system. More specifically, this new prototype. This prototype is a direct descendant of this other one which I presented here on the channel last year. Now, I've kind of lost count, but I think this one might be functional prototype number 22. And it was the first one to feature onboard synths and audio. So uh, this new one, let's call it FP23, uh, solves some of the problems of the previous one and it adds more features. So let's do a quick comparison between them. We'll start with the hardware and electronics. The Ohms FP22 uses a Teensy 3.2 microcontroller with a Teensy audio adapter for the 16-bit audio output. The new one uses a Teensy 4.0 with the corresponding audio board. The Teensy 4 is pretty much like its predecessor, except better. It has about 8 times more flash memory, 16 times more RAM and a processor which is about 8 times faster as well at a whopping 600 MHz. FP22 has a headphone level output plus MIDI over USB and it's also powered over that same USB cable. The hardware is capable of outputting line level audio as well for plugging straight into audio systems, mixers, amplifiers and anything that has a line or AUX in. But I actually never got around to installing the jack for that. The new one has those same options as well as the line level jack plus it does audio streaming over USB. These two new audio output features are really central to making a professional instrument, which is what I'm going for here. I want to be able to take this on stage and just connect a single audio cable. And so to make that work, I've also added battery power by incorporating a charging circuit and 800 milliamp hour LiPo battery. <laughs> But when I take the ohms into the studio, I want to record perfect clean audio from the built-in synths straight to my computer and that's what the USB audio streaming is for. For the rest of this video you'll be hearing the audio streaming over USB for the cleanest result. But I'd also connect the amp, which will make it easier to synchronize the camera's audio track as I edit. Both FP22 and 23 have the same kind of full metal capacitive keys. But where the older one uses the capacitive pins on the Teensy itself for the keys, the new one uses a pair of MPR121 sensor boards. I found this to be more stable, faster to read, easier to code for, Plus, the MPR121 has some awesome auto-calibrate functions, which keep the keys responsive at all times. The design for the Ohm's bendy pitch bend mouthpiece is exactly the same on both of these, with a pair of Hall effect sensors and magnets measuring the position of the mouthpiece itself. The mouthpiece has two tiny bearings in here for smooth movement and it's spring loaded so it self centers. Both prototypes feature the same 128x64 OLED display for accessing the menu, where you can use this encoder knob to select options and instruments, calibrate the sensors and load and save presets. Now as of added features, the menu has become quite deep. And so on the FP23, I've separated out all of the settings for effects, filters and instrument selection and a few more things into a quick menu which, as the name suggests, is quick to access and navigate. 
With a long press on the encoder, you enter the main menu and navigate the menu tree like this. While the quick menu is accessed just by turning the encoder at any time or giving it a quick press to automatically enter the specific setting that you were last editing. All of the options from the quick menu are still in the main menu, where you can peruse them at your leisure. But the quick menu is great for trying out different combinations of instruments, filters and settings on the fly. Both instruments have 10 presets that you can store in memory with all of your favorite combinations of settings. But on the new one I've separated out the storage of calibration data for the sensors into a separate menu while the presets save everything else. And speaking of calibration, the Ohms has extensive calibration options. You can auto calibrate each sensor of course by activating calibration for one sensor or all of them together and then simply actuating the sensors to your liking by blowing or bending or moving your lip. But then you can also dive into each sensor settings and adjust the specific minimum and maximum values, the speed of the sensor response and the curve applied to the reading. For example, I like to put quite a large buffer into the pitch bend sensor minimum readings so that I don't accidentally activate it when I get carried away in really intense musical moments. But on the other hand, I dial in the breath sensor to have the largest possible range so it responds to even the lightest breeze while still requiring the full force of my saxophone player lungs to max out the dynamics. There's one thing that I haven't mentioned, but which really stands out when looking at these two side by side, and that's the knobs on the FP23. Now these are here because the new Ohms has an internal delay line, and this is where I control that. This one is for the feedback, and this one controls the delay time, up to 4 seconds. This delay line is completely new to the most recent prototype and I had to jump through some hoops to fit it all in the memory, but it's honestly one of my favorite additions to the new ohms. This is how it works. There's a basic delay line with its time set by the knob and then from there you can turn on one or two extra taps with delay time set individually to fractions or decimals of the basic line. So for example you can set one to half the time of the basic one and the last line to a fifth of the time, or set one to 0 0.4 and the other to 0 0.7, or you can combine fractions and decimals. Play around with it, find something you like, and then save it as a preset. Or, of course, you can also set the feedback to 100% and make a perpetual loop to groove over. <laughs>
So the delay is awesome. Now one weakness of the current implementation is that you can't actually change the delay time while it's running, at least not without producing some nasty noises. <coughs> But maybe that's what you're looking for, who knows? Anyway, still working on the delay, not perfect, but it's definitely here to stay. Next, let's talk about the sounds. Now, I've kept almost all of the sounds from the FP22, but I've also added a few new ones. The way I think about this is that once the uh, instrument functionality, the menu, and in the case of the FP23, also the uh, memory for the delay are all taken care of, then I just stuff the rest of the memory with samples until I max out the chip. And yes, I said samples, because the onboard synths are all wavetables. All of the original ones are emulations of real instruments, like saxophone, oboe, brass, accordion, and so on. None of them are super super high end, simply because of memory limitations. But the new sounds on the FP23 ohms are much higher quality, most weighing in at about 5 to 10 times as much as the original ones. Of course, you should keep in mind that the ohms adds an extra dimension to any sound by having an adjustable filter applied proportionally to the breath pressure, which gives a constant modulation to the sound, so that can make even the most plain sound quite interesting and expressive. Wow. <laughs> 
Maybe one day I'll put a second synth engine in a future version of the ohms. But for now, I'm super happy with the current wavetable setup. The final thing that I want to point out has to do with the biphonic playing modes. Now, if you've seen any of my previous videos on the ohms, then you'll know that one of its superpowers is that it's able to play two notes at the same time using these two keys here. So while you're playing, you can sustain a specific note and then keep playing on top of that note. Then, if you want, you can at any time lock the currently sounding interval and play that interval as parallel lines. And then separately from all of that, you can also play two completely independent lines by controlling one voice in each hand. Now these biphonic playing modes have always required you to hold your hands in a slightly awkward angle to press down on the biphonic mode keys while still using the regular fingerings. So on the Ohms FP23 I made an alternate set of controls where you can activate each mode and then go back to your regular hand position to play in whatever mode you're in, like this. <laughs> Okay, so as you might be starting to realize, I could make this video an hour long and not run out of ohms features to talk about. One day, when I'm finally ready to release the ohms into the world, there will be a manual and that's where I'll put all of those details. For now, what I really need to do is play this one a lot, in the lab and in professional settings. I'll try to locate and squash any possible bugs and iron out some of the details in the code that I mentioned, like the live adjustable delay time and stuff like that. But that's for another video, which, to be honest, who knows when that'll be out. What can I say? I'm a terrible YouTuber. I have no upload schedule. I basically share my projects when I have something to share. Plus, I'm also busy working on other projects, such as the Click 3, which is a DIY kit for making wireless MIDI instruments. So I make no promises as to when I'll actually finish the open horn music system. If you want to make sure that you don't miss it though, then you know what to do. Subscribe to the Continuum Lab, hit the bell thingy, all that usual stuff, and you'll be the first to know. So take care until then, and I'll see you in the Continuum.